Remember that parable in Matthew chapter 20 with the laborers and the vineyard, how uh, that one guy showed up at the 11th hour and got paid the same as everybody else and they were real mad about it because it's not fair? That's the point. See, fair is the enemy of good. Nobody actually believes it because we are usually so desperate for things to be fair that we sort of get tunnel vision and we have to tell ourselves that life's not fair as sort of a, a, a cover for all of the laundry list of the things that we wish were fair. But it's still true. Fair is the enemy of good. Fair. Fair is uh, what looks at my sister's half of the cookie and decides that's bigger. And so uh, that should be mine. Uh, but the Lord has commanded us, thou shalt not steal, which means I should actually help her to improve and protect her half of the cookie. Fair says that there are some people that you help, but some people that you shouldn't help, not if they get what's coming to them. And the Lord says, love your enemy good. Good is what we see in this parable. You have a, a good God, which goes a whole lot farther than fair, because it's not just anymore. Uh, make sure that people get what they deserve. The whole point of the gospel is that we don't. See, good doesn't change, even though fair is always changing. Good is spelled out in God's law. Love your neighbor as yourself in these ways. Fair gets pretty flexible. But in all of it, the workers who agreed to a wage, they were perfectly happy with that one denarius they got until they saw that somebody who did less got the same. And fair changed, even though good didn't. Good. Good is God, the merciful master in this parable who is constantly giving out his possessions, not based on what we have earned, but simply out of the fact that he doesn't want anybody to sit around idle all day. He doesn't want anybody to go without. He calls us to receive good gifts from him over and over again, because in the end of this parable, the whole issue is not that some people did less work than others. It's that the master actually doesn't like us to be idle because idleness brings about a whole bunch of frustrating things. Idleness isn't just, I finished all my work early. It's, I have nothing to do. I have no neighbor to love. I have no vocation to serve in, and God will not abide by that. And so not based on what is fair, not based on what we earn, but based on his goodness, his love. He calls us to an absolute love of neighbor. He sets us inside of his vineyard and puts us to work and calls us not to measure how much we have done because we can be certain that we will all be paid not based on our works, but based upon the love of Jesus, which was good, which was perfect, which is finished, wherein it died upon the cross for you and for me. You see, that is your wage into heaven where Jesus bled and died for you. That is where your debts were paid. That is where your wage was earned. And so now it doesn't matter how much you do. It doesn't matter at all what's fair because I'm pretty sure fair wouldn't be Jesus dying for your sins. All that's left is what's good. The good master gives good gifts to you. Thanks for watching us talk at you. If you want to see us talk at you some more, subscribe to see notifications when we talk at you the next time. Donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. Help us to help you. And if you like this video, check out our website at higherthings.org and check out more content from Higher Things.